I get why this album cover was banned and this one. But this? Hi, my name is Frank. Welcome back to channel 33 RPM, your channel for vinyl gear and more. Today I'm running through 10 album covers that were banned. This is not a definitive list, but it is an interesting one. The original cover of the Beatles 1966 album Yesterday and Today featured an image of the band dressed in white coats and draped in raw meat. John Lennon and Paul McCartney apparently insisted it was the Beatles' statement against the war, particularly the Vietnam War. At the end of the day, it wasn't quite the statement that record company executives wanted to make. Capitol Records recalled all the albums and literally pasted this safer image of the band over the original cover. Today, those original butcher covers are very rare and highly sought after by collectors. The original cover of the Rolling Stones 1968 album Beggar's Banquet showed a rundown bathroom in the top part of a beaten up toilet. Some of the graffiti on the wall was scrawled there by the Stones themselves. Unfortunately, the label execs freaked out when they saw the image and put the kibosh on the artwork. A new concept was developed with the album cover made to look like a wedding invitation. As you can see in this revised version, the band's name along with the words Beggar's Banquet and an RSVP request were written in cursive font. Not terribly interesting or eye-catching. Fortunately, the original toilet cover resurfaced on reissues beginning in the 1980s and is widely available today. This definitely is one of those WTF covers, which I'm censoring here today because, well, look at this. Released in 1969, Blind Faith is the only studio album by English supergroup Blind Faith, which featured Eric Clapton, Steve Winwood, Ginger Baker, and Rick Gretsch. The cover, as you see here, features an image of a topless 11-year-old girl holding a silver painted model of an airplane. The photo was taken by a friend of Clapton's. Get this, the photographer originally approached a 14-year-old girl he spotted on the London Underground to be in this photo. It turned out she was too old though, so instead he got her 11-year-old sister to pose for the cover with the parents' permission, of course. Eventually, the album was released with two covers, this one and an alternative version featuring an image of the band. Many of the original covers came with a strategically placed hype sticker to obscure the nudity. I am all for freedom of expression, but I can 100% understand the controversy with the original album cover. Alice Cooper's 1971 album Love It to Death sparked a lot of controversy over something very small. The original cover shows the band members hamming it up. Alice is holding a cape around himself with his thumb sticking out to give the illusion he was exposing himself. You really kind of had to zoom in to see it, but there you go. And of course, people freaked out, so mission accomplished, I'm sure. Warner Brothers responded by having the offending thumb airbrushed out of the image for subsequent pressings. This copy I have here features the original uncensored image. This is not an original pressing though. This is a Rhino reissue that came out several years ago. It has the original gatefold, all the original artwork, and it sounds really good. Here's another one of those album covers that makes me cringe. I'm talking about the 1977 release from the Scorpions called Virgin Killer. The original cover featured a nude 10 year old girl, which obviously stirred controversy. As a result, the album was reissued with different artwork in some countries. The original cover was designed by the product manager for RCA Records in West Germany. The band apparently had mixed feelings about the image noting in some interviews that nudity is not a big deal in Europe, but in other interviews they've expressed regret over the image, saying they would never agree to using something like that again. The title track, by the way, is about time and how it eventually robs children of their innocence. Cool idea for a song, but as far as that artwork goes, it does not stand the test of time. The cover of Bon Jovi's massively successful 1986 album Slippery When Wet was a originally supposed to look like 
this. The album had various proposed titles, including Wanted Dead or Alive. The band changed the name to Slippery When Wet after visiting a strip club in Vancouver. The club apparently had a shower on the stage, which the dancers used as part of their act. The original cover, as you see here, featured a busty woman wearing a strategically cut Slippery When Wet t-shirt. Fearing the image would not be well received by young female fans, the record company demanded it be changed. And apparently John Bon Jovi also didn't like the pink. The lady cover was replaced with an image of a wet black garbage bag with the words slippery when wet traced in the water. That's the cover most of us saw. This original artwork was available in Japan only. Most music fans are familiar with this album and this artwork, but it wasn't the original concept for Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction. This was. The album's original cover art was based on Robert Williams' painting Appetite for Destruction. It depicted a robotic rapist about to be punished by a metal avenger. The band stated that the original artwork was a symbolic social statement with the robot representing the industrial system that's raping and polluting our environment. After several music retailers refused to stock the album, the label compromised and put the controversial cover art inside. It was replaced with an image depicting a cross and skulls representing each of the five bands members. It's not hard to find copies of the original album artwork, but they are becoming quite expensive. Luckily, I found a couple copies years ago when they were still relatively inexpensive. One of these is a Greek pressing and the other is a UK pressing. Nothing shocking except maybe the original album artwork for Jane's Addiction's 1988 debut. The cover image was created by frontman Perry Farrell. It features a sculpture of nude female conjoined twins on a rocking chair with with their heads on fire. That was enough to set the censor's hair on fire. And retailers weren't really happy either. Nine of the 11 leading record store chains in the US at the time reportedly refused to carry nothing's shocking with that original cover. As a result, it was issued covered in a brown paper bag. This is a reissue released a few years ago again by Rhino Records. To this day, I don't understand why the original album artwork for Poison's Open Up and Say Aw was banned. I mean, it's weird looking, but is it really that offensive? The original cover of the 1988 album featured a model dressed as a red demon with a protruding tongue. I always thought it was kind of cool, but for whatever reason, it caused controversy among parental groups and large retailers threatened to boycott the record. Of course, no one wanted that, so the label changed the cover so that only the model's eyes were visible as you can see here. Open up and say lame. As far as controversies go, this is another one I don't understand. The original cover of Van Halen's 1995 album Balance depicted conjoined twins on a seesaw in a post-apocalyptic setting. One twin is pulling the other twin's hair and of course they have no one to play with on the seesaw. The twins also were apparently placed in such a way as to resemble the VH logo. An alternative version was used for the Japanese market citing cultural differences. Here is what the alternative version looks like. One of the twins was removed, leaving only one child on the seesaw. What are other album covers that have been censored over the years? Let me know in the comments below. If you dig this video, I think you'll also love my Retro Deep Dives playlist. I'll see you there in a couple of minutes. Till then, keep on spinning.